Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by lynda.com. Today on Variant, I give you the history of Scarecrow. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I'm excited to play Batman Arkham Knight. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Speaking of Arkham Knight, one of the main villains in it is the Scarecrow, so I figured this is the perfect time to talk about one of Batman's best villains, Scarecrow. Which definitely says something because Batman has a ton of great villains. So let's take a look at why Scarecrow is one of Batman's best. Scarecrow is one of the earliest villains for Batman, coming before more popular villains such as the Penguin, Riddler, and even Two-Face. He first appeared in World's Finest Comics issue 3 in fall of 1941. He was created by writer Bill Finger and artist Bob Kane, who of course are the two responsible for creating Batman himself. Fun fact though, Bill Finger also co-created the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. And now you have that much more knowledge of Bill Finger, so you're welcome. After Scarecrow's first appearance in World's Finest Comics issue 3, he appeared one more time in Detective Comics issue 73 in March of 1940. After this comic, he was forgotten for over 20 years until being brought back by writer Gardner Fox and artist Sheldon Madoff in Batman 189 of February of 1967. Since then, the Scarecrow has been a reoccurring foe for the Dark Knight and much of the DC Universe. Hence him being in the first Nolan Batman movie, several Batman cartoon series, and of course the reason why I made this episode, his appearance in Arkham Knight as well as the Arkham game franchise in general. But now let's talk about how the Scarecrow became the Scarecrow. Or more accurately, how Dr. Crane became the Scarecrow. In his original appearance, Jonathan Crane was a professor of psychology. He was looked down on by other teachers for not dressing well, as he spent all his money on books. Crane was eventually fired when he shot a gun in class while teaching the psychology of fear, which is extreme, but it did get the point across. After being fired, he became the Scarecrow to represent the combination of poverty and fear. In this incarnation, he was shown as a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter, but he used a gun rather than fear gas. The Scarecrow's history was later expanded into the Scarecrow we know today in Batman Scarecrow Year One. In these stories, we learn Crane is unloved by his mother and abandoned by his father. Crane lived mostly with his grandmother, who was a religious zealot. Whenever Crane would do something she disapproved of, she would lock him in a church, where he would be attacked by crows. It's no wonder this guy became a villain. His grandmother was a nut. At school, he was also picked on due to his skinny body and overall awkward appearance. One day, Crane secretly watched his grandmother who was preparing the suit he was forced to wear when she sent him to church. He then learned how she managed to get all those crows to attack him. She concocted a mixture that attracted crows. Freaking weird. Later, he snuck into the room his grandmother had strictly forbidden him to enter. In the room, he found a library. Without his grandmother's knowledge, he learned all he could about all types of science, particularly chemistry. He developed his own version of the mixture his grandmother had used to attract the crows and tested it out on one of his school bullies. The bully was then attacked by birds and half blinded, which is why you don't bully or make fun of people. Well, you also don't bully or make fun of people because that's just being rude and a jerk for no reason, but also because you might get attacked by birds and half blinded. It could happen. When the bully realized Crane's involvement, he beat him up again, leading Crane to develop stronger chemicals and eventually even lead to him killing his grandmother. Crane finds that he takes tremendous pleasure in scaring people, literally to their deaths. He would later become a psychology professor at Gotham University, but gets fired from his position for harming a student during a demonstration of his theories. This is when he chooses to take the persona of a scarecrow and use the emotion of fear as the main weapon to take vengeance on those responsible for his dismissal from the university. And of course, he went on to become one of Batman's villains. During 2012, DC Comics gave their universe a reboot in the form of the New 52, and we got another origin for Scarecrow, which is the one that is currently canon in the comics. In this retelling of Scarecrow's origin, Crane was raised by his father, Father, Dr. Crane after his mother's untimely death. His father was working on a fear toxin for the US government. Part of his experiments was to lock his son Jonathan in a basement full of scary objects like dead bodies and creepy masks. Dr. Crane would then monitor his son's bio levels, but one day Dr. Crane died while Jonathan was locked in the basement. Several days later, police came to the house of Dr. Crane and discovered his dead body and Jonathan locked in the basement. Crane yet again was bullied in school. He learned to push past it and became a professor at a college until he was fired for throwing spiders on a co-ed. Because he was trying to cure her Phobia with a practice called habituation. After this, he started a private practice and became a psychologist, but after killing a patient, he decided that wasn't the career for him. He then practiced on others, honing the persona of Scarecrow. And that, my friends, is Scarecrow's origins over the years. I do want to mention, however, Scarecrow in the Blackest Night storyline, simply because he looked awesome and the concept was really cool. During Blackest Night, Scarecrow is immune to the Black Lanterns due to his inability to feel emotion. He claims that only Batman can scare him and tries to lure Batman to him so he can feel something. During this time, he is selected by the clone of 
Sinestro's ring to be a member of the Sinestro Corps for 24 hours, meaning the Scarecrow is wearing a ring that works by fear. That's like the most perfect pairing since PB&J. Now it's time to talk about Scarecrow's powers and abilities. Scarecrow is a master chemist able to create powerful fear toxins. In some incarnations, he is shown as a decent hand-to-hand -hand fighter, though in others he is shown as a physically weak character. During Nightfall, Scarecrow says he knows his own style of fighting dubbed Crane Style. Do you get it? I do. Which he uses against Jean Paul Valley. As a Scare Beast, he has immense strength and endurance. He is able to breathe a powerful fear toxin, and as I said before, Scarecrow is unable to feel emotion and says Batman is the only one capable of scaring him. But now, my comic conrads, I want to give you some Scarecrow reading recommendations. You have the Batman Eternal title, World's Finest Issue 3, The Six Days of Scarecrow in Detective Comics 503, Fear for Sale in Detective Comics 571, Year One Batman Scarecrow, and Batman Scarecrow Tales. Lynda.com is an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. Memberships start at $25 per month and provides an unlimited 24-7 access to top quality video courses taught by expert instructors with real-world experience. Learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace from bite-sized tutorials to comprehensive courses in web design, programming design, photography, business, audio and video, 3D, and animation. And you can learn on the go with their optimized mobile site or free iPhone and iPad app for members. Try Lynda.com for free for seven days by visiting lynda.com forward slash variants and get some knowledge into your brain. First up for Wednesday, June 17th, we have Darth Vader issue 7. In this issue, the tale of Vader's transformation from New Hope to Empire Straits Back continues, which I'm super excited for. Now we have Wonder Woman issue 41. A daring new direction begins with the arrival of a brand new villain. Let's see if this new arc is as awesome as Wonder Woman's new costume. Here we have Justice League of America issue 1. The Justice League of America book is starting back at issue 1. I really liked the last run in the New 52 when Jeff Johns and David Finch were on the book. So let's hope this one is just as good. And finally, we have Martian Manhunter issue one. All I have to say is it's about dang time Martian Manhunter got his own title again. I think he's a highly underrated character and I'm really looking forward to this book. And that brings another episode of Variant to a close, but before I leave you guys, I just gotta say the response to last week's Spawn John Boy giveaway was insane. Thank you to everyone for participating. I've already contacted the 10 winners and will be sending your prizes very shortly. Also, be sure to get your Variant t-shirt at our store. The link is in the description below. But as always, if you like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related, you can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Aris underscore Quinones. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to our channel. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. Anybody would be <laughs>